Welcome back. So I just want to make our solution a bit more generic so we can start deciding what type of database we want to use when we create this customer context later on. Um, so I want to add some options. I want to add the possibility to say this time when you build the context, use an SQL database. This time use an SQL Lite. This time use an in-memory database. So I, I want to kind of change this a little bit, adding a constructor and, and opening up for some options when we create our context. Let me just before I do that show you guys a list because there's a lot more NuGet packages out there if you want to kind of play around with some of the other crazy projects uh, later on. There's a link right here, you can go and check that out. So these are just different uh, database types that you can start using and some of them are available in core and some of them aren't. So I just want to show you that. But how do we actually decide when we create our context what database we want to use? Well, we can add something called the options and let me just try and show you the power of superclasses and the power of inheritance. So let's just jump into the DB context right here. It'll just go and get some external sources and unwrap them right here. It might not work if you're using uh, Visual Studio, but it works in Rider. So this is actually my context and how it looks. I'll scroll down a little bit because the cool thing, the most important thing is that we can actually send in something called DB context options right here. Now we want to send that to our data set. So we are going to have to do that by actually saying um, we need DB context options to be sent when we're creating this guy. And this is a good way for me to kind of show you how to use a superclass. So we'll jump back to the context. What we want to do is we want to call this constructor, which has some, th some kind of options in them, instead of calling this constructor that we're doing right now that doesn't have any options in it. Okay, so let's try and jump into our context and I'll show you how to actually use a superclass. So the superclass needs to get information right now and we'll do that by first of all creating our constructor that makes sense right we need a customer app context constructor and then this is how you do this and actually uh, call a superclass constructor inside C sharp I do a, a colon right here and I do base if my B worked come on B you can do it that we do we go base and that's pretty much all I have to do and now what I need to do is say whatever I send in here can I pass on to the superclass so in this case, what we wanted was a DB context options. I saw that right inside the code, DB context options. And you can actually add some generic information right here. We're going to need that as well. So I'll just put that in there. Now what we need to specify with these options is a customer app context. That's actually the current context. We need to explain that. And let's just call it options, OPT right here. And then all I need to do next is pretty much call my super class with that options inside it, like this. I'll just one line this so you guys can see it's not that complex. Now why make this madness? Well, because later on we're going to need this, we're going to need our constructor to know how we want to map this. So this means that we can now decide on runtime if we want to use uh, in-memory database or we want to use an SQL database on SQL Lite. So it opens up for us to from the outside using our custom app context, we can now decide how we want to kind of what database you want to work with. So just this is just a way to pass some options to your context to explain about um, the actual database you're going to work with. So just accept it. If this is way too confusing right now, then at least get this from this series right here, this uh, episode. Go in and explain to yourself, this is how you call a superclass constructor. Right? In C Sharp, this is how you call a superclass constructor right here. You put in a colon, you put in base, and you add the information that the superclass needs. And that pretty much means that now I'm calling a different constructor in my superclass, which is this DB context with an actual DB uh, options inside it. Instead of the basic one that we called before, that pretty much makes a default uh, DB context. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So that's what we need to do. Now, whenever I'm going to create a context, this will actually add the options of in-memory, SQLite, um, SQL database, so we can use that later on. So that's it for the constructor. Now you guys have added the options. See you next time. Have fun.